we are moving to question 312, which has been asked by Honorable C.N. Malimeja to the Minister of Small Business Development. The question is about the red tape in reduction plans, core element, and its implementation strategy for the SMMEs. Honorable Minister. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Member will remember that there's lots of initiatives that you are embarking on in order to deal with the red tape as it cuts across many sectors. Now this requires us to work with a number of departments and you have since established intergovernmental provincial task teams in order to make sure that when we get into a particular province, we're able to look at what is it that is the red tape in the different sectors. We've established that team and of course our focus is mainly on the red tapes against SMMEs, which is why, Honorable Madam Speaker again, we have initiated a study that focused on the legislation first and we have identified 29 pieces of legislation that are prohibiting meaningful participation of MSMEs in our economy. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Minister. Honorable Malimeja. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Minister, I'm going to go over to the last one. I'm going to go over to the last one. Melau le melau la wana yeviwe o eba shidi sauti na gara ikonomi. Question ivaure: How does the red tape reduction framework simplify business regulations and compliance to ensure that companies and entrepreneurs can focus on growth, innovation, and job creation? In other words, grow the business. Thank you, Minister. Honourable Minister. Thank you so much, Honourable Member. In the red tape uh, reduction framework, we are clearly articulating the areas in the pieces of legislation that we see as the, as the obstacles to the growth of the MSMEs. Now, if you identify all of those, then you begin to say what particular clause is a challenge to SMMEs and therefore come up with a recommendation to say this particular department or sphere must be able to address these challenges by repealing or amending a, a, a legislation. We are ourselves as the department are uh, amending our, the Businesses Act, which within it, we're trying to make sure that we simplify the process of licensing by digitalizing some of the processes in order to make sure that there's alignment both at national, provincial, and local level. And that will therefore make it easier for MSMEs to say as they register, there's basic requirements that they must provide, but at the same time, it will create commonalities amongst the municipalities and the provincial departments that you are working with. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Honorable S. Singh. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, to the Minister, what is the time frame for the red tape reduction measures to be finalized and operational, considering that it is 10 years that this department is in existence and that these challenges were known at the outset. Thank you. Honorable Minister. Am I audible, Madam Speaker? Yes, you are audible. Thank you so much. Indeed, the department just turned 10 this year. Now, we do understand as lawmakers that the process to develop a legislation in this country does not take less than three to five years. Now we have the Businesses Act, which is one of the documents or the legislation that I spoke about earlier to say it has some clauses that are red tapes to MSMEs. This is the, red, the, the document that I said we are amending. It was only transferred to the department in 2020. So yes, the department is 10 years, but the legislation was brought to us in 2020, which is why we are finalizing the policy and the bill that we have committed to this house that will bring before the end of the financial year. It will not take six days or six months because even the 29 pieces that I'm talking about requires extensive consultation and engagement as they either talk to repealing of existing legislations or introductions. But of course, the reason we set up the interprovincial task teams is to make sure that when necessary, for example, 
through the Department of COCTA, they can be able to issue certain directives to municipalities that must enable the MSMEs in their local spheres to, a, to be able to participate. Different departments are also doing the same. If you look at the challenge that people are faced with in relation to the illegal ownership by foreigners of spaza shops, the Department of Home Affairs has passed through cabinet the, the white paper on immigration and citizenship. And all these initiatives are meant to deal with the red tape at the different spheres. So the time frames, unfortunately, I cannot say tomorrow because they're dependent again in the programming by parliament and the extensive consultation that we must undertake. But we are committed, hence we are working jointly as government nationally, provincially, and at local level. We do hope that in the next few years we'll be able to defeat Thank the you. challenge that you are faced with. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Honorable Miss MC Mafagane. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Minister, many small, medium, micro enterprises have expressed frustration at the level of red tape. They must negotiate access to financial and incubation support services from your department. It has come to our attention that some SMMEs are complaining of middlemen, intermediaries that charges unreasonable interest rates to vulnerable SMMEs for them to access funding from your department. Does your department use intermediaries to facilitate funding of SMMEs? Who are these intermediaries? What is the amount of funding that was facilitated by these intermediaries in the 2023-2024 financial year. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member, Honourable Minister. Thank you so much once more, Honourable Member. All DFIs in this country utilizes um, intermediaries, all. Whether they're going to go to the big ones or the ones that are supporting our MSMEs. Honourable Member, we're not going to hear this. Order, order out. Speaker. Order, Honourable Member. Uh, Minister, can you take your seat? Uh, Honourable Reddy, what is the point of order? Honourable Speaker, I just need to know what is uh, MSMMEs. Are we referring to the MSC crews? Honourable or what are we referring Reddy. to? Honourable Reddy, that's the question for clarity. It's small, medium enterprises. Honourable Minister, can what you was proceed? It? Honourable Minister, can you proceed? Yeah, Honourable Red. Micro, small, medium enterprises, which is what used to be SMMEs, we've just aligned with international standards. So every time I refer to MSMEs, you must know that's the category that we're talking to. But Thank I you very much. I think you not only clarified, Honourable Red, you have clarified the number of uh, members in the house. You can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Now to the Honorable that asked the question on intermediaries, although the question is not related um, to the main question, but I will provide response. Uh, as I was saying earlier, all DFIs are using intermediaries. These are allowed in law in line with the National Credit Regulation Act that is in place. The certain percentages that they are allowed to charge but now we have realized that for the MSMEs, it means we are transferring the cost to them if they are to pay 30, 40% interest, which is why we're in a process of reviewing the policy to say those that will be delivering on our behalf, there's a particular percentage that they can't go beyond. There's many of them, and because the question was not as, is not linked to the, early, to the earlier one, I will therefore send you the details in terms of the names and how much has been dispersed through those intermediaries. Thank you, House, uh, House Speaker. Thank you. Honorable uh, P. N. Lutuli. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, <clears throat> Honorable Minister, while, is, while the goal of uh, eliminating the red tape is not ma to make it easier to SMEs to operate, 
it can also create opportunity for corrupt practices. Therefore, striking a balance is crucial. What transparency measures are in place to ensure that the effort to reduce red tape to do, to do not end up facilitating the corrupt and undermining the very, very purpose of the streamlining the system. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member, Honorable Minister. Thank you so much, Honorable Tuli, for that question. Indeed, every time government to introduce a good deed, there are those that want to undermine the strategic intent of the deeds that you are bringing. So in trying to address the challenges that are, that are faced by MSMEs, others will want to exploit the opportunity. But we are banking on the corruption practices that we've already put in place to say if we digitize the system and therefore we reduce many individuals as humans in certain aspects of the value chain of the work that we do, we'll be able to minimize those. But there's certain things we can't be able to do away with. For example, what we have observed in many areas wherein we're complaining about illegal traders, you find out that when you go to the municipality or to the particular shop, this person has a permit to operate this business and the permit is registered under Stella. When you come in, it is not Stella, it is, not, it is a non-South African at times, but this person is renting this permit from the South African. So we are continuing to engage with all citizens to be first loyal to their own country for the benefit of the next generations, but also to make sure that we protect the local economic development initiatives that we're trying to bring. Because when we try to do ease of business for MSMEs, we're trying to make sure that people can create jobs. We're trying to make sure that we involve everyone in our society, but those that are devils, they will always find a way and this is why we are calling upon all the members of this house and everyone who's listening to us to make sure that they remain loyal to our country. At least they owe our founding fathers for democracy that. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you.